Volumetric displays are not a new thing on the market, but they are quite awesome. And the part that always interested me as an engineer is how that spinning part is getting powered, cause LEDs consume a lot of current and that current should be somehow delivered to the spinning part. And usually, to transfer power and prevent the wires from getting twisted, slip rings are used. But unfortunately, I couldn't find slip rings small enough to make a tiny lamp. So I'm gonna use wireless power transfer to power the spinning part and see if it works. In reality, this spinning lamp video is kinda spin-off for another one, where a YouTuber made a tiny battery-powered display, which had one huge drawback. It was battery-powered. The battery was spinning together with the display, which meant the battery had to be changed quite often. I don't know how about you, but I'm not rich enough to constantly spend my hard-earned money on batteries for a lamp. So I'm making the improved volumetric lamp 6000 GT. I don't know what exactly it should mean, but at least it sounds cool. To assemble all pieces, I used soldering when possible and a secret grey goo, the recipe for which I will never reveal, even under torture. It's so good that I'm 100% sure it can glue together anything. Literally. Unfixable relationship? Grey goo. Bam. Fixed. Circular saw accident? Don't worry, grey goo can finger it out as well. The only problem with the whole assembly so far was those green PCBs for the wireless power transfer. The grey goo did a really great job gluing them, but nothing can fix that green color, which doesn't match beautiful blackboards. I should probably start a petition to ban green PCBs forever, to not ruin the view of the future projects. Coming to the most important component. As you know, the main ingredient of any modern lamp is obviously light emitting diodes. This one will have a lot of them, but they are small in size, which makes soldering them quite a challenge. Manually soldering 50 LEDs and resistors with a soldering iron would be madness. Life is just too short for things like that. I prefer spending my precious time on more important things, like complaining about high taxes and rent prices. So to save some time, I used a stencil to distribute another grey substance on the PCB. Then I carefully placed each component on the board with tweezers. It took me roughly 15 minutes. And after heating the board, the grey soldering paste should melt and solder components to their places. For heating the board, I used a small hot plate soldering station, which I will link in the description. It's small, but as my ex used to say, size doesn't matter. Not quite sure what she meant by that, but it definitely applies to this soldering station, because my board fits it perfectly. The hot plate controls the heating temperature, following a standard profile, slowly preheating the board and components. And as expected, the paste melted and the components were soldered, which was quite satisfying to watch. Unfortunately, when it comes to assembling, sometimes I feel like I have two left hands, because some components were slightly misaligned and floated away during soldering process. Fortunately for me, that's an easy fix. I just had to manually solder them back into places, and the board was ready for the final assembly. The most important task now was to solder PCB with LEDs to the substrate straight, so I used an additional board to make something like a right angle. With a flick of a wrist, the two boards were connected, and it was time to test it. In short, wireless power transferring works quite simply. 5 volts from USB powers the bottom green board, which creates a signal that excites the bottom coil. The bottom coil makes bzzz, and the upper one follows the wipe, making bzzz as well. Then the upper green board processes the power delivered to the upper coil and stabilizes it, providing a 5 volt output. The good news is, it works. Next I added a motor to the device to spin the whole thing. It's a typical 5V DC motor with a top speed of around 6000 RPM. The task was to secure it inside a 3D printed plastic piece. How did I do it? Grey goo, obviously. After it dried, I attached the upper part to the motor shaft. And you won't believe me how I did that. Exactly, grey goo again. By the way, all the parts you see in this video were made by the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Using their 3D printing and CNC machining services at a reasonable price, you can produce parts of any size, complexity and from different materials. For example, you can 3D print parts from various plastics and in different colors, but also from metals such as aluminum, steel and even titanium, 
all of high quality and very fast. Link for the PCB way is in the description. After letting the pieces dry, it was time to spin it and hope it didn't fly apart. But the problem turned out to be much deeper. For some reason my prototype was experiencing Vietnamese flashbacks. I'm not quite sure why, maybe the metal it's made of were dug up in Vietnam. But actually it was just an imbalance issue caused by, you won't believe it again, the green board. But this time not because of the color, but because it was only on the one side of the substrate, which shifted the center of mass towards it. And instead of a smooth spin, I got vibrations. To fix it, I soldered some mass to the opposite side of the substrate, trying to shift the center of mass towards the center. But I miscalculated a bit. Oops. Who knew that lead needs time to cool down and solidify before I can spin the lamp again? I suppose you should never trust metals, or you will get mislead. Nevertheless, after several attempts, I managed to balance it somehow and now it spins with just minor vibrations. Completely eliminating them would be quite difficult at this point, as I don't have special balancing tools like those used for car tires balancing. But it works and that's the best part. However, I must warn you that in real life it looks more like this rather than this. The reason you see it slowly moving and changing patterns is due to the stroboscopic effect. The camera I'm using takes pictures at discrete moments of time, capturing some positions of the spinning lamp and missing others. And after all these frames are glued together in one video, it creates the illusion of slow movement. But it doesn't mean it cannot look like that in real life. It could, but with the proper control of LEDs. But then this video would have been called a volumetric display, not a volumetric lamp. Anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to check out previous ones, where I made a spaghetti lamp and a sunset lamp from a camera lens. They are extremely cool.